Hello, everybody. And it's me. It's not Melanie. Melanie's still here. But... <laughs> but She's um, taken over. Yeah. <laughs> me and the angels. <laughs> no, listen, we're here today because I really thought that it was important that Melanie shared a little bit of her story because I know that some people... Are, are, there's, there's about a hundred of us in this group some of us know Melanie really really well I'm absolutely honored to have her as a friend a good friend in my life but there's lots of people that I've brought into this group that Marcy has brought in that Sarah has brought in that might benefit from just hearing a little bit of Melanie's amazing story so I convinced her to let me interview her today and she said so she's going to talk a little bit about her story lovely golden nuggets of her life and um, then we're going to do a very short tapping probably tapping around abundance and big vision and then and that's that's really it so short and sweet but just for you to get a little a little bit more insight into who the amazing Melanie Bondock is that I love Thank you. So Thank you. Uh, I want to hear. I was feeling a bit resistant about doing this. I thought I'll do the three day party were. and I'll just slip off back to where I came from. <laughs> but no, Ashley said, no, I'm going to interview you. I said, OK, fine. All right. <laughs> so I want to hear about how you came to be the big vision manifesting queen mm. that you are now. And it starts off with little stories and the little things that I know about you, things I mean, Disney World yeah. just this year yeah okay so just give right. us a little background Let me backtrack slightly okay so I guess my um, journey into spirituality and um, this kind of um, enlightened way of being um, it was it was a it didn't just kind of come overnight it didn't just hit me like a bolt out of the blue and um, I guess it all started when I was pregnant with my son so he is just he's just about to turn 12 so when I was pregnant with him um, I had some sort of awakening of sorts um, when I first found out I was pregnant I was convinced I was going to have a cesarean um, that childbirth was going to be painful it's gonna be a nightmare it was just something I had to kind of get through rather than a process to be enjoyed and cherished and you know being a beautiful experience so I came across a book called and the gentle birth method um, and that kind of introduced me to yoga it introduced me to the art of visualization because along with the book came a visualization CD on visualizing your perfect birth and it all sounded a bit bonkers but I thought I listened to the CD and from about six months pregnancy and I listened to it most days and you just visualize your perfect birth you visualize and but also you could write a birth plan the birth you wanted to create then I thought actually do I really want to be up to my eyeballs in drugs do I want to have a cesarean I thought actually no I don't really um but that's just what I was expecting. My mum had had me by a cesarean, so that's just what I expected. But I thought, actually, no, I'm going to choose to have the birth experience I want. So anyway, I believe this book changed my life. Um, I visualised a water... I thought, I'd quite like a water birth. That sounds quite good. You know, maybe I don't need drugs. Maybe it doesn't have to be that bad. Um, because basically what this woman had written in this book was that um, us here in the Western world, we spend more time preparing our nurseries than we do our bodies for getting for for ha having a baby. But actually, you need to get yourself physically into shape, nutritionally, get yourself into shape, and all this stuff. So, it actually, made such sense. So, I thought, well, why not just follow this lady's advice? Anyway, cut long story short, I ended up having a water birth. It was amazing, a very short labour, and it was like, oh my god, it really wasn't that bad. And when I spoke to my friends, they're like, oh my god, you know. We had terrible experiences and I really had a, a wonderful experience. It was perfect. And then same with my daughter a couple of years later. Fabulous birth experience. And um, now, unfortunately, at that point, I failed to continue the visualization of a child who slept through the night, um, a child who ate everything <laughs> that was presented. Um, it kind of went out a bit window, the window at that point. <laughs> But that was my first, um, I wish I'd continued at that point, but I just did the birth and then just parked it for a couple of years. <laughs> and then, um, anyway, so when my, I just had my daughter, so we're now a couple of years down the track and I wanted to, um, I didn't want to be doing my corporate job anymore. At the time I was um, working in London, I was doing recruitment, headhunting, very kind of full on. And I just wanted to be at home with my kids. I wanted to, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to do. I'd um, decided to train um, 
you know, my spiritual awareness was growing this whole time. I um, had my Reiki practitioner training and then I moved into reflexology as well. And, um, and it was during my reflexology training, I had wonderful, wonderful teachers. And the first lesson we had in our mm. very first, we sat down there, I was expecting foot charts and diagrams and all about the feet. And, um, but Anna, my teacher said to me, um, we want to teach you about this thing called the law of attraction. And we want to teach you about the art of manifesting. I think, oh, what's all that about then? It sounds quite interesting. And she says, I want you to kind of um, think about the things you want to attract into your life. What do you want to be? How, you know, she was kind of using it as a becoming a reflexologist slant, but I was kind of thinking kind of bigger. I was, th all I could think of her words were, what do you want? And the universe mm -hmm. will give it to you. And I was thinking beyond reflexology at this point. Um, I was thinking, okay, so at the time, my son had um, got his, um, it, we were looking at primary schools for him. He was at nursery school, at the primary school he was at, but then we were allocated the primary school. And it was a school three miles away, the other side of the town. Um, I couldn't walk there. It wasn't the most desirable school. And I was absolutely devastated. Um, so at that point, all I could think of, the thing I want more than anything else is for my son to be starting at the school of my choice in September. I want him to be, um, that was all I could think about. That was my thing that was consuming me. Um, mm. And already I'd been told, look, they don't listen to the county. They don't listen to appeals at this age. They don't listen to, um, you know, you've got a 0.4% chance of winning your appeal. Everyone's saying, look, don't even bother. Don't even go there. So I said, okay, I said, I'm not having it. My son is going to this school. Then I did open up to look at all the school that he should be at. You know, that's the other thing where we want to manifest this or something better because sometimes the universe has a better plan than us. But I really knew that I didn't want him to be going to this other school. So... So we were taught this little manifesting trick where we say, I'm happy, ready, open and willing to accept. And then XXX, whatever it is we want to draw into our lives. And I popped this note under my pillow. I literally sent this order out to the universe. My son is going to be going to this school. Anyway, so um, I went through the appeal process. We sat in front of a panel of people. I presented my case as to why um, this school was right for my son. And anyway, of course, I won my appeal. And... Um, and Ben continued to um, get a place at that school. It was a bit of a, it was just a very funny story that, um, you know, they've said, oh my God, nobody wins their appeals. It just doesn't happen. I said, okay, well, it did happen. Deal with it. <laughs> and um, so that was kind of my first thing. So then later on that year, I was on a roll. I was just like, what do I want? What do I want? So it was kind of like, right, shopping list, wish list. I want this. <laughs> I manifested a super king size bed because my kids um, just, um, you know, we needed a big bed to accommodate. They didn't like to sleep in their cots and their own beds. So they, <laughs> so anyway, I got this giant, world's biggest bed. Um, lots of little things. Um, but anyway, at that point, my huge desire was to stay at home with my children, to um, not necessarily be a stay-at-home mum, but I didn't want to be going out to the corporate world every day. I wanted to be the one to take my children to school. I wanted to pick them up. And I knew that this time with them as small children was going to go quickly. I just wanted to be there for them at this precious mm -hmm. time in their lives. So um, obviously I was doing my Reiki and my reflexology. And I thought, you know what, I would just love a practice at home. Um, but I need a cash injection. I need a little boost. I need um, the figure I had in mind. I plucked out. I wrote that note under my pillow. And I said, universe, I just love £20,000 because that doesn't feel too greedy. I would love a little windfall of some sorts, you know. Please just give me £20,000 and I can hand in my notice and I can get my practice up and running. And um, <laughs> so that was the message I put out to the universe. I didn't know how that money was going to come, but the fuel, because a lot of people ask for money when they're setting their intention, but the desire for my money was to stay at home and be with my children. That was why I wanted the money. Whenever people say to me, mm -hmm. I want to manifest a million pounds, I say, that's all very well. Why do you want that money? The reason I wanted that money was to stay at home with my kids. That was my heart's desire at that point. So I always say, connect with your heart's desire. What do you truly, truly want? So my heart's desire at that point was mm -hmm. to um, be at home with my kids. Now, at that time, I was still working and I worked um, um, 
a place called Elstree in Hertfordshire and I drove past Elstree Studios every day. It's a big TV film studio, Star Wars was filmed there. Um, and more recently, um, lots of TV shows, including Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was filmed there. So I drive past these studios every day and there was a big Tesco's next door to um, where I worked and there was a big giant poster for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the, game sh- the host Chris Tarrant and, um, and it was just literally on the wall of the studio. So every day I think, oh my God, wouldn't it be great to be in that show? And for years before <laughs> I'd phoned up to try and apply to be a contestant on the show because it's one of those things, um, I've got lots of random general knowledge in my head and it was... I love watching quiz shows. I love pub quizzes. Um, I'm good at a general knowledge quiz. So I thought I I could do that. I could do that. So I I imagined every day being sat in front of Chris Tarrant, visualizing being on the show, um, winning the money and even feeling what it'd feel like, that nerve wracking tension of, are you going to win the money? Are you going to lose it all? And I'd literally, being a Pisces, I'm a daydreamer. I daydream this every day driving past the studio. I remember it as clear as day now doing this. And then I kind of thought, then this is where the action taking comes in. Well, how do you get to be on the show? So I went on the website and then I noticed they were doing a round of auditions. They were changing, they weren't doing the ring in anymore. They were um, actively selecting contestants to be on. So I rang up. Long story short, I had to go to Manchester um, in the snow and ice to go, I was asked to go for an audition. Went to the audition. And um, and the following day, I got a call to say, we'd love to have you on the show. You're a contestant. Oh, oh my God, fantastic. <laughs> and then at the time, I still thought, well, you know, there's still only a one in 10 chance of being on the show because I had the whole fastest finger first. And um, not every, you may have, may, you may got on it, but still only of those 10 people, one or possibly two people would get in the hot seat. So I got there and I arrived, mm-hmm. well, still only a one in 10 chance. Anyway, they said, right, we've rebranded the whole show. It's had a big refresh, reformat. um, And um, we've got rid of Fastest Finger first. We're going to be filming six or seven episodes today. You are going to be in the hot seat. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I literally, um, I was a contestant on the show. I didn't have to go through that whole Fastest Finger first. Sat there with Chris Tarrant. Um, I've literally just found the episode on YouTube the other day. So I will share a link because for a long time, people have, um, I had it recorded, but then I lost the recording. My mum and dad have got it on VHS video. and um, um, But now I found the episode on YouTube. So I will share it so you can watch me. Um, <laughs> it's, um, it's funny. It's very funny. Um, so how much did you win? I won £20,000. <laughs> Of course, the amount that I had asked the universe for. And you'll see, you know, if you want to watch the episode, you'll see that I actually said at the beginning, I, I was made redundant um, just before I'd gone on the show. And to be honest, the redundancy was amazing. I had a really good um, package. And I remember my boss making me redundant and he was so upset. And I was just like trying to contain myself. Thinking, yes, I'm made redundant and I'm getting a payoff. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, and then this came along as well so it was just amazing I could then start up my business and um, you know I wish I'd asked the universe for more at that point Um, but in my limited thinking mind it felt greedy to ask for more but I think actually the universe gives you what you ask for so go Mm. big dream big ask Mm. for what you truly want and don't limit yourself with oh my god that feels greedy that doesn't feel very spiritual that feels xyz um i asked for twenty thousand pounds i was given twenty thousand pounds you get what you're given you get what you ask for i love what you said i love what you said the other day it really struck with me don't settle for good enough yeah aim for the big big vision and i realized that i had been settling that Mm. i had been oh things are okay now they're fine and I and it just that really struck me. And this these last few days, I've been okay, Ashling. What is the what do you really really want? And when you said that to me, even last year, mm. what do you want? It took me a week to figure out what I wanted. Mm. Such a powerful, simple question yeah. that just literally rocked me because it there was there's there's sometimes there's a bit of fear in that as well because it's like so oh god, fear. if I if I really ask for if I really get this, I'm gonna have to give up all this other stuff, you know. If you want change, mm. it can it can bring in a little bit of discomfort, a little bit of turmoil. So when you, we really, it's really important to get clear about what you want and then to work through the, which brings us nicely onto maybe a bit of tapping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Um. Yes. Yeah, just 
just to recap, just to elaborate on that slightly, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, what do we want? I limited myself thinking, you know, £20,000, um, it seems like a nice, reasonable amount. It, anything more than that seems greedy and unrealistic. Um, how is anything more? £20,000, you know, I could, I could get a little £20,000 win. I had no idea that it was going to be who wants to be a millionaire. So um, now I know, you know, the lesson I learned from that is actually don't limit yourself, really, just go for it. If I'd known now what I'd known then, I would have set my sights on the million pounds and I would have got it. I know I would have got it. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, so how would I use some tapping with this? Um, I would use tapping in a way where we could just, let's just tap into our big vision I choose to be aligned with my big vision. So say we've set our intentions, we've set our, um, 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 actually, no, maybe, sorry, let me just connect for a moment. I Mm -hmm. would say actually more, I choose to have courage to go for my Mm -hmm. big vision, letting go of the fears and the doubts and the limitations. I choose to have courage. I choose to let go of the fear that's stopping me from going after what I want and um and go for it so let's just do a quick short round on that brilliant okay. brilliant then. okay and it'll take about 10 minutes melanie or five minutes or yeah yeah for everybody less, than, less than 10 minutes less than 10 minutes okay 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 even can you grab it see if I'm going... so i'm just doing a quick interview sorry <laughs> okay 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 even... <laughs> I think my kids have just walked in. Hopefully they'll be quiet. Even though I have all this fear. <laughs> Go on, repeat after me, Ashley. Even, Even though, though I have all, all this fear. fear that's stopping me from going Even after Even though I have my, all this fear. That's stopping me from going after my big vision. <sighs> that's stopping me from going after my big vision. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I have all this resistance in going after the big thing. Even though I have all this resistance in going after the big thing. Because I don't know how it's going to happen. Because I don't know how it's going to happen. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I have all this resistance. Even though I have all this resistance, all these doubts, all these doubts, I choose to release them now. I choose to release them now. And I choose to trust. And I choose to trust. That the universe wants. That the universe wants. What I want. What I want. The universe will support me. The universe will support me. And it will open up magical doors. And it will open up magical doors. Introduce me to the right people at the right time. Introduce me to the right people at the right time. And I choose to trust that everything is unfolding perfectly. And I choose to trust that everything is unfolding perfectly. Okay. All this fear and doubt that's standing in the way of my big vision. All this fear and doubt that's standing in the way of my big vision. I choose to let it go now. I choose to let it go now. All this resistance towards my big vision. All this resistance towards my big vision. I choose to let it go now. I choose to let it go now. I don't know how any of this is going to happen. I don't know how any of this is going to happen. And even though I've done clearing. And even though I've done clearing. And I've released stuff. And I've released stuff. Some of the roots are so deep that they keep popping up. Some of the roots are so deep that they keep popping up. And I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with that. Because I know that I can have what I want. (sighs) Because I know that I can have what I want. I just have to remember. I just have to remember. That the universe wants what I want. That the universe is supporting me and guiding me. What was it? I just have to remember. Yeah, I just have to remember that the universe wants what I want. 
that the universe wants what I want. And the universe is guiding me and supporting me. And the universe is guiding me and supporting me. As I choose to be aligned with my big vision. As I choose to be aligned with my big vision. Aligned with my goals and dreams. Aligned with my goals and dreams. That I can have this. There are no limits. There are no limits. The only limits are the ones I put up for myself. The only limits are the ones I put up for myself. And I choose to let them all go now. And I choose to let them all go now. I choose to release them all now. I choose to release them all now. That I trust that everything is unfolding perfectly for me. I trust that everything is unfolding perfectly for me. In the right place at the right time. In the right place at the right time. It's all unfolding perfectly. It's all unfolding perfectly. Okay, last round. I choose to feel good about my big vision. I choose to feel good about my big vision. I choose to feel excited about my big vision. I choose to feel excited about my big vision. I choose to trust in my big vision. I choose to trust in my big vision. That I can have these things. That I can have these things. It's safe for me to have these things. It's safe for me to have these things. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited. And I'm ready to receive my big vision. And I'm ready to receive my big vision. In body, mind and spirit. In body, mind and spirit. Okay, take a deep breath in. And exhale. So, yeah, that's just an example of just, you know, that just came to me just to have the courage to go for it and to trust that everything's unfolding perfectly. But, yeah, so many different ways that we can use tapping to support us with our big vision that I've shared in the group and, and yeah, the broadcast I've done. So that's just, in, you know, another way just to keep us on track. One day you might need some courage to tap into. One day you might need to release a fear. One day you might need to release a doubt. One day you might just need to um, re-energize yourself. Um yeah, so many different mm. ways that um, we can. And yeah, and you you have hundreds of videos, and you're on Periscope, and mm. so you do lots of free stuff that people can connect with out there, yeah. and they can literally. You've you've probably tapped on everything. You did a video. You did one tapping with your kids. Mm. Yeah. around fear and night and so I mean there's something for everybody in all yeah. of your archives just absolutely and... yeah. so um as an EFT practitioner and life coach um my niche where I help people is to go towards their big goal their big vision their dreams there are many many EFT practitioners out there um and I won't be you know so if you want help with your big vision and your goals and dreams being the leader of what you do yes I can help you um, there's EFT practitioners out there for um, you know people with cancer, people with post-traumatic stress, people with addictions, um, early mm. abuse, trauma, that sort of thing. If it's kind of a bigger level of trauma, then go and seek a practitioner who's an expert in that field um, because there are so many amazing EFT really is magical. So many amazing properties, and you know literally you can use it for anything. Mm. Um, yeah. breaking up slightly um i don't know if yeah. i'm still recording yes, and you're getting <laughs> yeah yeah no it's fine and but your your gifts melanie are around helping people get their, their achieve their big big vision mm. and in in a really nice flow and a, and a nice way to do things that it doesn't have to be it can be like I'm thinking, you you manifested Euro Disney. Yeah, or sorry, me, shall I share Florida, that story? Disneyland. Should I share that story quickly? I'd say really, really quickly, and then wind it up by telling people what's next, how they can connect with you, okay. if now, they want Disney, to work with you on a deeper way. Okay, now five Disney, minutes. Okay, Disney was an amazing story, and people, you know, you know, people who know me do know this story. But um, so last year, my heart's desire, and again, I always say, but connect with your heart's desire. Eight, nine years ago, after I had my daughter, my heart's desire was to stay at home with my children, to be a, not a stay-at-home mum, but to be the primary care. I didn't want to have to go out to work every day. That's my heart's desire. Last year, my heart's desire was 
a bit more shallow. My heart's desire was to take the kids to Disney World. Desperate, always wanted to go myself. And my daughter's like, I want to go to Disney World. I want to go to Florida. I want to see Mickey. I want to see Minnie. So I said, okay, that became a family heart's desire. We made a vision board together. I declared it on Periscope. This is what I want. And it became an obsession, just a bit like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire became an obsession. So we made a vision board. I've actually got it right here. And um, I got my daughter to watch YouTube oh. videos. We, we, we visualized it. We, um, you know, and I've actually, so there we go. We've got the Harry Potter, Universal Studios. She wanted to go there. All the roller coasters, swimming with dolphins, um, all this stuff, you know, she wanted to do. And um, so we sat and this was... March last year, March 2015, we made the vision board. I remember because I posted it on Facebook. Um, action steps. What did I do? I kept ringing up travel companies, costed it up, you know, how much is it going to cost? But also I let go of the attachment that I needed £10,000 to take the family there. And um, so I really set my intention on, you know, doing this. I saw a competition, Clark's Shoe Shop, filled it in. Oh, family holiday to Disney World, filled it in, stuck it in the prize drawer. But I kind of let go of my attachment to it as well. January the 4th, last year, I had a telephone call from Disney World, head, no, sorry, Disney head office in London. I actually missed the call saying, hi, Melanie, this is, um, I think it was Danny from Disney. Could you give me a call, please? I was like, oh, what's this all about? Then I thought, is it a scam? Is it a salesy thing? But then there was a little part of me that, oh, my heart was beginning to pound. I thought, oh, my God, what is this? I rang him back. I said, Melanie, do you remember you entered that competition at Clark's Shoe Shop? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You won the first prize, family of four, trip to Disney World, Florida, flights, accommodation, park passes, everything. It's yours. And I thought, oh my God. It's like, wow. I think you literally cannot make this stuff up, you know. And I remember I was talking to my um, business coach and, and she did a visualization with me and I talked something. And, and I'm thinking, I think when I was talking about making a success in my business, I just, think, I just want to make enough money to take the kids to Disney World and take them to Florida. And she said, use the same principles that got you on who wants to be a millionaire and apply that to Disney. And that's what I did. <laughs> and it works. And, you know, so now I know that there are no limits. Now I'm at the, so very quickly, when I talk about the law of attraction, there's three stages. There's the parking space, which we talked about in our earlier conversation. Manifesting parking spaces, achievable, easy. We can all do that. Then there's kind of the big stuff, like who wants to be a millionaire, um, Disney World. I'm pretty good at that now. I can manifest mm. these things. You know, I'm going to LA in a couple of weeks. That's kind of been a manifestation in itself. That's kind of happened in quite a magical way. And um, and then, mm. but the third part of the law of attraction is about the big, the huge vision. What do you want your life to look like? Let's design your whole life now from where you're living, where you holiday, how you make money, the friendships you have, the relationships you have. What does your whole entire life look like? That is what I want for me, and that's what I want for everybody, and that is how I help people. Now, very quickly, just mm. so what I am um, now again, when I speak to people, they often talk about, you know, I want to have all this stuff, but the thing that's holding me back is money, it's abundance. Now, so when I surveyed my community last year, I wanted to create something that incorporated tapping that helped people to tap into abundance because I really believe that it's something we can tap into. It's a mindset shift. So I created my program, Tapping Into Abundance. And um, and I launched this last year and it was, even the way that was launched was magical in itself, the way it all unfolded. It was just mm -hmm. fabulous. And um, so now this program exists and I want to share this with as many people as possible. Um, and yeah, so this program, it's seven steps to tapping into abundance, shifting your money mindset. Again, we go back to decluttering again, and each module has tapping through it. We tap through the decluttering. Then we, mm -hmm. um, declutter our mental thoughts, all our old money stories. We clear and we tap and let that go. Then we, um, set the big vision for ourselves. You know, what do we want our money story? We talk about money here. What do we want our money story to look like, to feel mm -hmm. like? to feel truly abundant. Then we tap into gratitude. That's another big thing, being grateful for all that we already have. Then we are going to tap on clearing the blocks to receiving because a lot of us, you know, I've seen it with some people, you go to give them something and say, no, 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 no. And again, a bit like you mm. offering to interview me today. I was a bit like, oh, no, 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 I'm not sure if I want to do that. But no, you have to graciously receive. But so many of us are programmed to block that 
reception channels that we literally physically block this abundance from coming to us. And then um, we then tap on, you know, being remembering how abundant we truly are and just tapping into I am abundant. So the first part of the, um, oh, actually, there's a big practical, I've missed out. There's a very big practical non-woo-woo grounding exercise because you know all of us kind of woo woo people we think okay if I sit under a tree and manifest with the fairies for long enough this pile of cash is going to land into my lap okay sometimes it does um but equally sometimes we've got to do some leg work here as well and there's a big piece in the middle and a lot of people are resistant about doing this it's actually getting clear on your money story it's about opening up those bank statements it's about um setting Mm -hmm. income goals for yourself it's about you know opening up those files and drawers it's um you know looking at your bank accounts it's looking at your outgoings each month it's being really clear and specific on the um mm-hmm. amount of money so that is non woo so for those die hard woos out there you're not going to like this but it's really really necessary um but i think uh, just to cut in yeah. quickly melanie i think that my understanding is that when you can manage the money that you have the universe will give you more. Absolutely. But, but if you can't manage it, you know, for a while with me, it was coming in, but it was going out as quickly. Mm. So I needed to, I realized that I needed to learn to manage this, what I have. Otherwise, the universe is certainly not going to give me any more. That's what I felt like. Yeah. I need to, to, to honor the money that I'm receiving and learn ways to, to manage that. And it just, it has opened up yeah. the portals for more. It really, and doing your really work, does. Doing the work so with it's, you. You know, we need to have one foot in the real world, the grounding, the practical, the stuff that we don't want to face, but we have to face it square Mm -hmm. in the eye. But then it's also coupled with the magical manifesting, the visioning, the angels and the color and the love and the light. It's a magical combination. And I really believe, you know, this is what I'm all about. Yes, deeply spiritual, very connected, but equally, we've got to take action. We've got to make plans. We've got to put ourselves out there. We've got to invest in ourselves. We've got to... um, do the work we've got to do whatever it takes in order to give us the life of our dreams and and I know there's a few people um a lot well a lot of people are doing this already um but I just want as many people to kind of literally tap into that abundance as possible now very often as soon as we talk about investing ourselves that old money story comes back in you know I can't afford it I can't afford it if you keep saying to yourself I can't afford something it's not going to happen I couldn't really afford going to Disney if you were looking at the actual fine. Even if I'd had £10,000 come into my life, I probably thought, you know what, I need um, to get a new front door. I need to um, do this. I need to, um, I would have spent it. I would probably wouldn't have justified spending them. So I don't think money is always the answer. Money is amazing and it's wonderful. We need it. But say if you wanted to invest in yourself, um, you've got to look at the bigger picture what is the cost if I don't do this? What is the cost of me continuing as I am? Sometimes we do just have to. And things, if you want something enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. You know, it's mm. the desire that comes in. So is it whether it's investing with your program, investing in a business coach, investing in personal development, getting yourself to a conference, you know, getting myself mm. to LA next yeah. month, you know, I've made it happen because the desire was strong enough. If the desire to want to do something is there, the universe will find a way for the money, the funds to appear for this to happen for you. So I'm opening up the doors of tapping into abundance. And it's normally £197. And again, I see the price of that going up in the future as I upgrade the program and I refilm the videos. But um, I'm offering it now to the people who are coming into um, this program for £97, which is an absolute bargain. I've seen so many other money mindset programs out there. I've bought into them. Some have been like four figures, really expensive programs. And, you know, they're great. But I think equally for what I'm offering, it's an absolute bargain. I really, really think it is. And I just want as many people to benefit as possible. But not just to buy a program and to sit there in your files waiting to be dusted off at some point in the future. But um, I support my um, community with um, f- with Facebook Lives. We tap together. We um, we do the work together. And um, so starting, so the doors are open now for tapping into abundance. You can have the program now. You can start working through the modules. But from the beginning of February, I'll be doing four weeks of Facebook Live broadcast to support people because this program, the seven steps, they're designed to be done. It's designed to be done four times a year do it at 
um, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Do it at the equinoxes. Mm. Do it at the um, solstices. Um, do this four times a year because you can't just do it once and expect to be abundant. It's stuff we need to keep working on over and over again. So the doors are open and yeah, I would love to have many people there as possible. Well, that is fantastic. And I am going to be famous now for the person that interviewed the beautiful Melanie Bundock. <laughs> you know, my big vision for you, Ashling. Um, you know, my big vision for you. Um, it's, it's, yeah. The world famous <laughs> Ashling Mooney. <laughs> okay, everybody. I, I would love to hear your comments to this or if you have any other questions that you want to ask Melanie about. She's loads of stories or, or just anything. You know, one of the things that I say from an angel's point of view is ask, ask, ask. So if this brings up questions for you or you want to, like, how do I tap for for health? How do I tap for peace of mind? How do I tap away migraines? Melanie helped me with... um. An, an attack I had with, I was allergic to cats and started having yes, a, like a, a, a that panic wheezy. attack. I couldn't you can breathe. breathe. Yeah. Yeah. And she mm -hmm. helped me with that. I was able to relax enough to go to sleep. It was amazing. So, it, mm -hmm. so any questions that you have about uh, for any area of your life, you can ask Melanie in the, in the, uh, in the group um, and particularly around abundance. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, my thank dear. Thank you. Thank you for making <laughs> me do this. <laughs> oh. um, Bye for now, everybody, and I'm sure we'll connect again. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.